So I was doing some programming and uh, I needed some advice with a, a simple programming issue and I started like I usually start by going to a Stack Overflow and uh, typing my question in there. I'm sure if you have done any programming you know about Stack Overflow. The problem is that um, it can be a quite hostile place if you are just starting out and you don't know the terminology and uh, if your question is rather simple then you will get heavily downloaded and possibly even blocked from the site so instead of asking the question on stack overflow i decided to try what chat gpt would uh, give me so let's search for chat gpt and it's the first result here and there's now this try uh, chat gpt and you do need to have an open ai account so i'm gonna log into mine but it's free to use here's the question that i had so yeah if i have an array of acronyms like this uh, so let's say that i have this array let acronyms equal and then there's three values psp ps4 and v and then I would like to give the user of the website the full name uh, based on the acronym they chose. And I imagine that the full names could be in a different array like this, where the positions match with the positions in the acronyms array. So, you know, they could be a full names array, perhaps Sony PlayStation Portable, that would match that. Sony PlayStation 4, that would match that. And Nintendo Wii, that would match that. And then what would be a good way of getting the corresponding full name based on the chosen acronym? I don't want to write an if statement since the actual list is quite long. So let's ask this question from chat GPT. So I'm going to go here and paste this in and click here. And look at that. It's even writing it as code here. So let's see what it says. So one way to achieve this would be to use an object to store the acronym as a key and then the corresponding full name as the value. Then you could use the chosen acronym to look up the full name in the object. For example, so there's the acronyms, there's the full names, but uh, uh, they are suggesting, hey, what if you create an object to store uh, the acronym slash full name pairs so it could be called acronym map loop through the acronyms and full names arrays so it created this loop that is looping um, through the acronyms array as many times as it's long and then it's uh, adding this stuff to the object now you can use the object to look up the full name for a given acronym so let's choose an acronym if it's a PS4 and then it will give me Sony PlayStation 4. So how amazing is this that it uh, wrote all this? Now I could have probably figured this out myself. I could have probably written this myself, but it would have taken a while and it just wrote it in like seconds. Then it says here, this approach has the advan advantage of allowing you to easily look up the full name for a given acronym without using a long list of if statements. It also allows you to add new acronyms slash full names to the list by simply adding new key value pairs to the object. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good answer. Let's try again though. I'm gonna, gonna paste this in. So this is pretty amazing because uh, it's advising me uh, actually to do it in, a, in an even better way. It's telling me that, hey, maybe you should use an uh, object instead of uh, to separate arrays because it's more efficient. So you could define an object that has the acronyms as keys and the full names as values like this. So let names and then there's like the acronym and then the full name, acronym and the full name. And then... Uh, when uh, the user gives us the acronym, we can simply search the object using that acronym and return the full name. This approach is more efficient and easier to maintain than using multiple arrays and it allows you to avoid a long chain of if statements. Plus, since objects are unsorted in JavaScript, you don't have to worry about the order of the 
keys and values. So how brilliant is this that it, it's even like uh, telling me that hey there's actually a better way than what you asked for uh, so and it's explaining this in a very easy to understand and patient way. Maybe I'll ask a couple of different questions. Uh, so let's do how can I remove a specific value from an array in JavaScript? Let's ask that. How can I remove a specific value from an array in JavaScript? Uh, this answer looks pretty awesome. So, to remove a specific value from an array in JavaScript, you can use the filter method. This method creates a new array with all elements that pass the test implemented by the provided function. You can use this method to create a new array that does not contain the value you want to remove. Here's an example. So, we have an array with uh, numbers 1 to 5, and then it's creating a new array here, and then it's filtering the numbers array with dot .filter, and the condition it's passing in here is that the in individual element is passed into this function and it's called number and as long as the number is not 3 then the values are returned so in, because of that the new array will be 1, 2, 4, 5 so it's really cool it <laughs> wrote the code and it's also giving a really nice explanation here now let's check if it can tell us um, how to detect if no input field has a focus in JavaScript and here it looks pretty good. Okay, so to check if no input field has focus in JavaScript, you can use the document.active element property. This property returns the currently focused element in the document or null if no element has focus. All right, here's an example of how you can use the document active element property to check if no input field has focus. And then there's this little code snippet. If document.active element equals null or document.active element tag name to lowercase is not input, then no input field has focus. So that's uh, very nice. It's explaining what it's doing here. And then it's even giving us a little warning here in the end saying note that this approach will not work if the focused element is a non-input element that can receive focus such as a button or a text area. In that case you need to check for those elements as well, for example. So that was a pretty good answer and it even gave us a, a warning for some potential issues uh, that we might have uh, if we have also other kinds of elements that can get the focus in JavaScript. Very nice. Okay, let's do this one more example. I asked what is the sub str to tree equivalent when using sub substring. Uh, I asked this question because I was reviewing some old code that was using sub str and uh, that's now deprecated. So um, I wanted to switch to substring, but substring works slightly differently and I didn't want to think. So I just asked this question and here it's showing me that if I'm using sub str and I'm extracting from two uh, starting from position number two and then extracting three characters um, then the same thing using substring would be starting from two and then going until position five so also this was uh, really helpful so I can really see that this will uh, change forever the way I approach uh, programming. I think I will be asking a lot less questions uh, on Stack Overflow. I think I will be googling a lot less and instead I will just be conversing with this super intelligence uh, called GPT using this free chat GPT from OpenAI. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time on fastertutorials.com.